In this section we will look at low voltage systems. These are used in all situations, from the electrical system in your house to complex industrial networks. So you need to understand all of the basic principles of how they operate and how to use them safely. I hope you enjoy the section. The aims of the course today are to show the basic features of low voltage systems. To look at a basic socket ring system. To show the different lighting circuits that are used. Let's look at a typical house and its electrical system. Firstly, we have the main supply from the local distribution system. This feeds the power into the house and is terminated on the consumer unit. We then have lighting loads in each room of the house. Most houses have a cooker in the kitchen, fed directly from the consumer unit, as it draws a substantial amount of current. And finally, multiple sockets spread around the house. Firstly, let's look inside a typical consumer unit. The first thing we have is incomer circuit breakers to turn on and off the supply from outside the house. These are usually red in colour and switch on and off the live and neutral systems. Feeder circuit breakers to turn on and off the lighting, socket and other circuits. These normally switch the live feed only. A neutral terminal strip to terminate all of the neutral wires. And finally, a ground terminal strip to terminate all of the ground wires. You will find all of these basic elements in any house consume unit. Let's look at how we wire the individual elements. Firstly, we have the incomer cable carrying the electrical supply into the house. This connects to the incomer circuit breaker, which switches both the live and neutral wires. The ground wire does not need to be switched and is connected straight to the ground terminal strip. The neutral terminal is now connected to the output of the incomer circuit breaker. Next we need some feeder circuit breakers for feeding the electricity around the house. These are all connected to the incomer circuit breaker via the live bus bar. To connect a feeder cable, we simply connect the ground and neutral to their terminal strips. And finally, a live connection to the feeder circuit breaker chosen for that circuit. We normally only switch the live connection for feeders.
Here's how we connect the electrical sockets to the consumer unit. Here we have the consumer unit as before, with some feeder circuit breakers, a neutral terminal strip, a ground terminal strip and a live buzz bar. Here we have a single socket. This is a three pin socket with a live, neutral and ground. Firstly, we connect the live feed from the circuit breaker through the cable onto the socket. Then we connect a neutral feed from the neutral terminal strip through the cable and onto the socket. And finally, we connect the ground wire from the ground terminal strip through the cable and onto the socket. We normally group the sockets together into one circuit, fed from the same feeder circuit breaker. Let's see how that's done. Here's our consumer unit from before, with a live buzz bar, a feeder circuit breaker, a ground terminal strip and a neutral terminal strip. As before we have a live connection from the feeder circuit breaker onto the socket, and a connection from the ground terminal strip to the socket and the neutral terminal strip to the socket. Here we have another socket. This is connected in parallel to the original socket. All we need to do is loop the ground wires across, the live wires across and the neutral wires across. We can keep on adding as many sockets as we need. This is a standard radial socket circuit. To turn a radial socket circuit into a ring socket circuit, we simply loop back the live, neutral and ground wires to the consumer unit. We now have a ring system with power flowing into the loop from both directions at the same time. Most domestic socket circuits are connected in a ring system as this reduces any volt drop issues and shares the current better around the circuit. Let's now look at a standard lighting circuit. Here we have our consumer unit from before. Firstly, we have a light bulb with a live, neutral and ground connection. We have a single pole light switch with two connections. We connect a live wire from the feeder breaker to the single pole light switch. We then connect the live of the light switch to the light bulb. And finally, we take the neutral back to the neutral terminal strip and the ground back to the ground terminal strip. By closing the light switch, we apply the live to the light bulb and it turns on. By opening the light switch, we remove the live from the light bulb and the light bulb switches off. The main thing to remember is always switch the live connection and not the neutral. Here we have a typical ceiling rose. Inside the ceiling rows we have a neutral terminal strip, a live terminal strip, a switch terminal strip and a ground terminal strip. The light bulb hangs down from the ceiling rows and is connected to the neutral terminal strip, the ground terminal strip and the switch terminal strip. 
Firstly, we need to connect the supply to the ceiling rows. As this is a ring, it comes in from two separate directions. We have a cable from the left hand side of the ring. From this, we connect the live to the live terminal strip, the neutral to the neutral terminal strip, and the ground to the ground terminal strip. We then connect the right hand ring. We have now energized the ceiling rows. We have a separate light switch, which is normally on the wall. Firstly, we connect a live connection to the switch. From the live terminal in the ceiling rows, through the cable, and onto one side of the switch. Then we take the live connection back, through the cable, and onto the switch terminal strip. And we connect the ground wire to the ground terminal strip. To signify that the black wire is really a live wire, we put a small red marker on both ends. This is a common way of wiring lighting ceiling roses. Another common lighting circuit is for the stairwell or corridor, where one light is controlled from two light switches. Firstly, we have a light bulb. Here we have two two pole light switches, one at the bottom of the stairs and one at the top of the stairs. They are called two pole light switches because they have two possible output conditions. We then connect a live to one side of the switches and a neutral to the other side of the switches. The common point of the switch connects to the light bulb. This arrangement relies on the fact that a bulb will only light up if we apply a live and neutral to it. Which way we apply the live and neutral doesn't matter. By operating the left hand switch, we change the supply from live to neutral. We now have neutral and live across the light bulb. It therefore lights up. By operating the right hand switch, we change the supply from live to neutral. We now have neutral on both sides of the light bulb. It therefore doesn't light. Whichever switch we operate will change the status of the light bulb from off to on or on to off. Let's now summarise what we've learned today. The power to a house is fed in through a consumer unit, which contains an incomer circuit breaker, feeder circuit breakers, a neutral terminal strip and a ground terminal strip. The socket circuits in a house are fed in a ring system to limit the voltage drop. The lighting circuits are also fed in a ring system with two double pole switches used for stairwells and corridors. You've now completed five modules. I should now be starting to understand all of the basic principles that we use to design and operate the electrical power network. In the next few sections, we'll start looking at the main equipment that we need to make the power system a reality. I've attached some questions on today's section to test your knowledge.